What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys step-by-step step how to replace a screen door lock. So as you can tell, this one here has seen better days. We're gonna be replacing it with this Wicco one here, which is now called Yale. So basically the exact same lock, different brand. Um, and we've got a black one here because we don't actually have the color option of matching it to the existing door. So the black is the next best thing. Let's get straight into it guys, let's do this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start removing this outer cover here. Two screws on the inside. Once you've got those two screws, dispose of them and then this face will simply come off. Pull all of this out, throw it away. Next thing we're going to do Usually there'd be a screw on top and one on the bottom. The bottom one's missing. So we'll just replace or we'll remove the top one. You also need to remove our little locking screw here, which is a long screw that goes into the actual cylinder. So I'm gonna show you guys in a second. This part here is where most people tend to get stuck and then they end up calling a locksmith. Um, the vast majority of times when I'm replacing these, the tenants or the owner has either lost the keys um, or they've misplaced them. But I'm gonna show you guys a trick to get around that because I don't have the keys either. Remove this large locking screw right here, and that is still locked in there. And the reason why it's locked in there, I'll quickly open up the packaging and I'll show you guys what's actually happening in here so that you guys have a better understanding. It might be a little bit worrying at first when you open it up and you see how many components are inside, but it's pretty simple. I'll show you guys how to do it step by step. That way you guys can get out there and replace it as well. We've got our two handles. We'll put these two here on the side. We've got our little lock, which I'm gonna show you guys right now what we're actually doing with this one here. All right, so this one here is the cylinder that we're gonna be replacing. Um, we need to remove the old one. Now we've removed the locking screw, which holds this one here into place. However, it's still locked in there. And the reason for that is there's a little cam here or a little wing on the side, and that's moved over on the side in that position. So if you imagine it inside, the wing comes out to the side and it's getting stuck on that body. So what we needed to do originally, if we still had the keys, which I'll get the keys in a second. So if this one here is in the side position or down position, all we'd need to do is get the key, turn that one there back over and that'll free it up. So then we can remove it. But in this case here, it's stuck in the side position and we need to rotate that cam back up to the top of the actual cylinder. The way I like to do this is by using a little pick like this one here. You can use anything, a little hair clip, bobby pin, anything that you've got laying around that needs to be relatively uh, thin to get into a little gap between the side of our um, cylinder here and the actual lock body itself. So I'll try and feed this one through this side here. If not, we might need to go on the other side. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna just push this in and just rotate that cam manually. So once again, we'll have a quick look. It's in on the side. All we're doing is just getting that in and we're gonna rotate that out of the way. So you take the little pick, slot it in between the cylinder and the actual door lock itself. And then we're gonna fish that little cam out. So we're just gonna lift that up to the top position, free it up. And once that's done, you'll be able to pull it out. And now we've got our cam removed or our cylinder removed without needing the key. Throw that one out. We can now take out our lock body and we can get all our little components now ready to be reinstalled. So we've got our lock body. We'll get our strike plate, which we may or may not uh, install depending on how much um, difference there is in size with the old one, but we'll find out in a second pull out all the little components and I'll show you guys what we've got. So we've got our large locking screw. This one is gonna be the largest one out of the batch. We've got two screws that will hold our um, covers back in place. These two timber screws here, easy way to know, they've got a pointy tip on them. So this one here is to reinstall our strike plate. And then we've got two little screws that are gonna hold our body lock. So we'll take our two little screws We'll take our um, locking screw, our cylinder, and the actual lock body. So now we can take our lock body, push that one there in. We'll take our two little screws, 
and we'll screw these ones here back in. So you can line these ones here up with the existing holes. And on the bottom, put our cylinder back in, turn it halfway, take the locking screw, and that's going to stop this one here from wobbling around. So it's going to help secure it. Test it, make sure everything's working. And now we're ready to move on to installing the rest of our lock. So now we can slot our little shaft in, take our two handles. Now the one that has the little snib here to lock it, that goes on the inside. And this one is both reversible left and right hand. So both left and right hand sides. Put our little shaft through. One side on. Same thing on the other side, rotate it in the right direction. Put that side there on as well. And now we can put our screws in. So put them on hand tight initially so that you don't cross thread anything. Take the drill and follow through. This will also come with two little black caps that's to put over the screws. Um, what I like to do is don't push them in all the way. Just put them so that they're sitting basically flush just in case you ever need to remove them or somebody else needs to. They're not gonna have to drill those little plugs out. So now we've got that all in, our lock is now working. We'll have a quick look at our strike plate. And the reason why sometimes I replace them and sometimes I don't is it really depends on what they've originally got here. Sometimes they've got a larger strike plate from a really old style screen lock. Um, and if I put the new one on, then you're gonna have bare timber exposed everywhere. The whole positions will be different. It makes it look really, really ugly um, than what it already is. But this one here is perfect. So we're gonna remove the old one, use our two new screws. And we're going to install our new strike plate. You can hear the wind is absolutely screaming today. Really windy day. Screws those ones there back in. Test out our door. So we're going to close it from the inside. Make sure it locks in position. And most importantly, make sure that it locks over. So now we've got it completely locked. Open it up. If you find that you're able to close it, it doesn't move anywhere, but when you do turn this over to try and lock it in position and it doesn't allow you to lock it, usually what that is, is a little issue in here. So you just need to um, take out a little bit more material or a little bit more timber out of our strike location here and that'll allow your latch to go all the way in. So there you have it guys. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Test it out with the key, just to show you guys that it's all working as it should. Perfect. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching, Bill's out too.